10 to nothing here. The Giants with the lead. They have the football at the 10 yard line. New England has tied it up. Sam the Bam Cunningham with a four yard run. See if they run the option play somewhere in this drive. They had good success with it early. Abandon it on the last series and uh, it's a good trap. And Willie Spencer is carrying the ball and Spencer almost has the first down. He's up to the 19 and a half yard line. It'll be a yard short. But they have continued to go away from that option since that one series. Well, they, they probably will use it. It'll be interesting to see when they do use it. They may be a little concerned about using it in that part of the field with, with not, not, without having good field position. But that was a trap play with the left guard, Doug Van Horn, number 63, trapping the defensive uh, left end, Bob Pollard, and it was a nice gain on the play. Van Horn, a very steady performer in his 12th year out of Ohio State. Second down, a yard to go. He gives up the middle to Spencer. He's got the first down. Willie Spencer. For the Giants. A first down, 5-10 remaining. The sun's starting to disappear here, and it might be getting even a little colder. Our chill factor before kickoff was one degree. Doug Coder. Coder breaking one or two tackles. And Coder close to the 30-yard line. Six-yard pickup. That time they operated with two tight ends, Gary Shirk and Al Dixon. Two tight end offense to control, especially the weak side, by controlling that linebacker and did a good job of picking up yardage on the play. Of six yards makes it second and four. Coder with not 45 yards. You know, Coder's one of those guys, Hank, every year you hope somebody beats him out, but he's always around, ready to play and contribute. Yes, he's a con great competitor and a very determined runner and uh, gets the most out of his ability. No question about that. And he is right now doing a good job against the Cardinals. Second down. Four yards to go. Dean to Coder. Coder having trouble. Bob Pollard was there, but it was more the treachery treacherous footing than anything and they continue to slip and slide and the colder it gets the worse it may be yes and that time again they had a double tight end situation with Shirk and Dixon trying to run to the left side but as you mentioned it was a slippage on the play and uh, now it's third and five Shirk comes back out of the picture cuts to the far side they got another wide receiver in as they have Moorhead along with Jimmy Robinson flanked out on a third and five Andy Dean. Neils giving pressure to him. A pass complete to Al Dixon, and Dixon very close to the first down. Al Dixon with his 16th catch of the year. It's a first down for New York, a seven-yard pickup. There was a little confusion on that play, evidently. Uh, Dixon uh, made the reception, number 84. Uh, but Willie Spencer was also in the area, and it looked like both of them were in the same spot, but it was good for results. They picked up the, the necessary yardage for the first down. First and 10, ball being under 34. Well, Dean on a straight drop back that time, Hank, completed yes. it. And he's three or four now. He's showing a lot of poise out here this afternoon. Dornick is now in the backfield, and this is Dan Dornick. Out across the 35, Mike Johnson, the nose tackle, drops him there. So the Giants have a little ball control here. They're establishing some offense as we now approach the two-and-a-half-minute mark of the second quarter. Well, the Giants really have, are, like to run the ball very much. As I mentioned earlier in the show, they, they're eighth in total offense, four running and nine passing, so it's obvious that they, do, they like to run as much as they possibly can. Second down and eight, just across the 35-yard line. We're approaching the two-minute warning. Randy Dean, play action, look out, Ken Green. But he gets rid of it. And I'll tell you, you've got to take your hat off to Randy Dean and the presence of mind to stay on his feet and get rid of that football. Yes, he showed a lot of poise and uh, kept good composure, got rid of the football and avoided, avoided a big loss. Here's a safety blitz with Ken Green, number 37, coming in. Looked like he had him. Put him in a nutcracker there, but he got rid of the ball in good shape. It was an eligible receiver close enough by, and uh, as a result, he kind of dodges a bullet, so to speak, and doesn't eat the yardage on the play. So Randy Dean now has a third and eight, and he's going to throw again. Protection is there, complete to Gary Shirk, the tight end, Ken Green defending on the play. And that, the 
going to bring up a fourth down as they're about nine yards short of the first down. But again, Randy Dean has to be getting some confidence each time he throws a football and completes the pass. So he goes trotting off. And now Jennings, who's averaging 46 yards in this game, will go back and kick again. Try to keep the hands warm, and that is a continual battle. This is Gordon Bell, back deep, facing his former teammate. Bell on the fly, look out. And New York's got it. That kick was not booted the way Jennings wanted it to, but it comes up with a good effort on the part of New York. And Otis McKinney, who has it, and recovers it just outside the 35-yard line. That was only about a 29-yard kick. I think it fooled Bell, and Bell tried to catch it on the fly. Yeah, it was a bad gamble. You have to make a decision. You have to get a good jump on the ball and catch it high. Or if you can't do that, to get away from it, let it bounce. But you can't lose possession. That's what happened on the play. All the guys that do commercials for Light Beer for Miller are big stars and guys like that. Me, I'm just a humble bartender. But I drink light, too. And I'll tell you why. It's less filling, it's got a third less calories than a regular beer, and it tastes great. Jerry, now that you're a big star, can I have your autograph? Well, sure, Mr. Dangerfield. Hey, would you like mine? Not really. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. How about my initials? Americans have always had a love affair with the automobile, and of the more than 2,500 different cars introduced, one was the best-selling ever, this one. Ford Fairmont. Presenting Fairmont 79. Designed for a changing world with lots of room for the money. A great EPA mileage estimate for today's driving and a range of sticker prices that are surprisingly low. America has made Fairmont the best-selling new car ever introduced. Sedans, wagons, and the exciting Futura at your local Ford dealer. Next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern on the CBS Sports Spectacular, see some of the greatest stars on ice in super skates. You'll say... You saw it on CBS Sports. Okay, Hank, let's pick it up again, see what Gordon Bell tried to do. Yeah, he exercised very poor judgment on that play. He didn't get a good jump on the ball, and uh, if you don't get a good jump, you're better off to stay away from it rather than get involved in missing it and trying to catch it low like he did. Otis McKinney, number 23, made the recovery, first and 10, New York Giant. And so the ball at the 38-yard line of St. Louis. Emory Moore head in motion. Randy Dean, he's got the option going, but this time he's going to keep it, and he's going to pay for it at the 35-yard line. What happened there, Hank? There was so much penetration by the defense, he couldn't set the option up. Yes, it wasn't, it wasn't cleaned out well at all on that last play like it had been in the past. And one other thing I'm sure they're going to do, they're just going to say, fine, run the option, and we'll let you, as a quarterback, run the ball. We won't let you flip it. And as a result, that's going to make a big difference, and they'll discourage that's what usually happens once they get used to seeing it. They'll say, let the quarterback run the ball. We'll get him out of the football game. All right, 121 left to go in this first half. Second down and six. Dean with a gain of four. Play action complete. Near side. That's Jimmy Robinson. Boy, he was just engulfed that time by the Cardinals. Tim Carney having a little discussion with him back there. Well, it's going to go to a third down, and now about nine yards to go. John McVay looks on as we have 59 seconds remaining. The Giants have called timeout with a 10 to nothing lead. Kathy, what are you doing in the dark? Waiting for Santa. Ho, ho, ho. I wonder what he'll bring me. Well, have you been a good little girl? Person. Good little person. Hey, person, Merry Christmas. Oh, what a Make a dream come true this Christmas from Christmas Dreams Diamond Collection 79. Radio Shack has a great gift idea for the whole family. Fast action TV games and they're on sale. Get this six game model for $29.95 or the four game model for $21.95. With rising entertainment costs, that's a real bargain. You play hockey, tennis, squash, and more. Easy to hook up and great family fun that lasts all year long. The sale price TV games. Only at Radio Shack, a Tandy company. 
Well, there's your score, 10 to nothing. You see the time in the upper right-hand portion of your screen, 59 seconds. It's third down, virtually nine yards to go for the Giants. They lead it, 10 to nothing. Randy Dean. He's going to run it. And he's going to be stopped at the 32-yard line. It's fourth down. And the Giants have one timeout remaining. Let's see what they're going to do. Field goal team still on the far sideline. Joe Danello, and they thought about sending him in, but they're not going to. Jennings will come in and kick instead. That would have been a long field goal, but they do have the wind to their back crowd here thinking maybe they should have tried the field goal. You see the time ticking away. Jennings going back to kick. There's a lot of confusion on the part of the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals figured they're going to go for the field goal. Yep. And they're faking it. They fake it short. As that is Brian oh, Kelly geez. running the ball to the 30 yard line and that didn't feel too many people. So the Cardinals hold with six seconds left. That was a good try, though. It was worth the gamble. It was worth the gamble because uh, the St. Louis Cardinals, you know, do not have good field position after this exchange. But it was worth the chance to try to make that first down from a kick formation. They didn't do it, however, but it was a good gamble, I think. Earlier this year, they pulled a gamble where Larry Mallory threw a pass on a 35-yard strike against the Saints. But this time they tried to run it. And so the Cardinals get away with fumbling that punt. They do not give up the points. They trail it 10 to nothing. And they'll just kill the remaining time. At halftime, we'll go to the NFL today. Brent, Jane, and Irv. Stay with us. Boy, what big football games we have throughout the NFL today. Here comes Steve Jones. And on the prevent defense, he's got a first down. And that'll be the end of the first half of play. So the Giants who historically this year have gotten off the mark well, take a 10 to nothing lead. And this year, they have outscored teams in that first quarter remarkably. They have scored 100 points in the first quarter in this 1978 season. So they've got to wonder if they can hang on to this lead. The Cardinals, on the other hand, hope to get their offense on track. 10 to nothing, a halftime score in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Wherever you may roam, you'll find us near your home. Oh, hi, it's me again, posting and tasting more posters. This time it's for the first annual Delco battery sale. AC Delco is making it possible for you to buy a Freedom battery at a special sale price. Thanks, Delco. Wherever you see this poster, look for it in, uh, look for it in your neighborhood for a great price on a battery you can trust. Thanks, Delco. Well, you'll be saying thanks, Delco, too. You know, for too long now, bowers have been left out of light beer commercials. And football players have been grabbing all the glory. But bowlers know light beer from Miller tastes great. We know light's got a third less calories than the regular beer. We know light's less filling. Yeah. Bowlers love light just as much as football players. That's right. right. And we also love the easy opening can. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. You know what you could do with Mobile One? You can now drive from New York to Los Angeles without an oil change. And back. And back again. And back. And back again. And back. And back again. And back. 25,000 miles. 25,000 miles without an oil change. That's what you can do with Mobile One. Hi, my name's Hal Needham. You know, for 22 years, I was a stuntman. Some people said king of the stuntmen. Of course, that's a rumor that I started. Two years ago, I started directing. I did a little show called Smokey and the Bandit, a show called Hooper, and now I'm doing a show called The Villain, and it stars Mr. Kirk Douglas. It's gonna be a winner. But in spite of our busy schedule, we're gonna take time out to watch the stuntman competition right here on CBS Sports Spectacular. Who knows? Next year, I might come on the mothballs and give it a whirl myself. What do you think about that, cowboy? If you do, I'll be right in front of my set watching it on the CBS Sports Spectacular.
Back live in New York, I'm Brent Musburger. Let's get you up to date right now. Time is running out in the first half in Philadelphia. Dallas struck first. They lead it 14 to 7. And, of course, the game you're watching. The Giants are up by 10 at the half. Washington and Atlanta. Fierce defensive battle. 10-7. The Redskins lead it by a field goal in the second. Buffalo and New England are tied. The Bills scored first in that game. And... The New York Jets and Cleveland, 17-10 as the Jets are coming back. Matt Robinson has hit Harper for a touchdown there. Green Bay and Chicago are scoreless in the first quarter of that game. And, of course, Jane, yesterday we showed all the gadget plays this year. I understand Washington unloaded the gadget of the day. What is Sunday football without a gadget play? At least <laughs> one gadget play. We have in the Atlanta-Washington game, Brent, fake punt. I mean, there's always one particular gadget. So this one is the fake punt. The ball comes out. Mike Bragg passes for 56-yard play, hits Terry Anderson, who beats the tackle. They don't go in from the five, so they eventually settle for a 21-yard field goal, and Washington leads 10-7. to seven. So that's the kind of offense it takes to win now in the NFL. Let's show you exactly what has happened in the Dallas-Philadelphia game so far. The Eagles turned the ball over a couple of times early in that game, and it contributed to touchdowns by the world champion. Here's Jaworski going to Harold Carmichael, who fumbled as he was rolling over. And Cliff Harris just scooped up the ball. I think Carmichael thought the play was dead, watching his response to that a couple of times today. Down to the five-yard line, Scott Laidlaw busted in behind a left tackle. Now here's Jaworski again, and watch Benny Barnes pick him clean. There's that sideline pattern, and he just stepped in there. And he got back and set up their second score inside the 10-yard line. It was a passing play. Staubach, Dorsett will slip out of the backfield after faking the block. They set the screen beautifully over on the left side. And the extra point made it 14-0. This time, the Eagles don't miss, and it's a marvelous effort by Harold Carmichael. There's the big fella, and he breaks D.D. Lewis's tackle, slams through another one, and gets down to the Cowboy six-yard line. Mike Hogan in for the touchdown. And again, it is 14-7. They are now at halftime. And Irv? Grant over at the Meadowlands, the New York Giants lead the St. Louis Cardinals by a score of 10-0 at halftime. And, of course, both teams' records of five wins and nine losses are playing for respectability. And it was the Giants early in the ballgame who drew first blood as number, as a fullback here, number 35, Dan Dornick, the rookie out of Washington State, blast up the middle. The Giants later get a field goal out of it. And Randy Dean comes back here, roll out, throws back to Jerry Shirk, touchdown, and the Giants take a 10-0 lead. Cardinals had difficulty getting anything going at all. Hart going back here is hit. The ball is caught by Bob, Bob Young. He's an ineligible receiver, so that play won't count. And the Giants, of course, lead at halftime. Boy, a score of 10 nothing. Okay, Irv, our alert tape room now has put together what's going on. Washington, Atlanta, again, a fierce defensive struggle. Those two teams are tied at 8-6. They want a wild card spot in the playoffs, and they've been knocking helmets. Watch now the kickoff. Mark Mosley is going to be the man who's going to have to make the tackle in this sequence. The Falcons come right up the middle. And it is Pearson breaking one tackle, busting to the left side, and Mosley got him out of bounds. Interference on Washington. Bartkowski goes to stand back, and it's a touchdown for the Falcons. It was 7-0. And then back came Joe Theismann. The Redkins have stumbled after that brilliant start. Danny Buggs, the one-yard line. And John Riggins scored their touchdown, and then with the fake punt that Jane showed you, they set up the field goal. The NFL today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local stations. Sunday, it's the third annual Circus of the Stars. Join 33 of your favorite celebrities as they risk life and limb and death to fly and see. Sunday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. This is CBS. Ten to nothing, our halftime score at Giants Stadium. The Giants scoring all ten of their points in the first quarter. 30-yard field goal by Danello and a six-yard touchdown pass by Dean. Christmas is a time for closeness, and closeness is what Norelco razors are all about. The shiny new silver rotary razors in cord and rechargeable models with 36 blades, 9 closeness settings, and no gotchas. And the Ladybugs, the ladies' razors that really work. And the Ladybug Salon, a ladybug razor plus 11 grooming attachments. Norelco, even our name says Merry Christmas. 
Introducing a new American road car. The all-new Ford LTD for 79. With more front seat room, more rear seat room, more window area, and more handling ease than last year's LTD. Plus the power of a V8 engine standard. A road car to take you across town or across the country. This land is your land. This land is my land. To test drive the all-new LTD on your own roads, see your Ford dealer today. These are my teammates, the St. Louis Cardinals, and I'm Jim Bakken. Every town loves its kids, but in St. Louis, we think we show our love in special ways. Like here at the St. Louis Children's Zoo. Part of the zoo was built in 1904 at the World's Fair when we introduced America to hot dogs and ice cream cones. Kids have loved St. Louis ever since. Unfortunately, it's not hot dogs and ice cream for all kids. When we think about children, we have to think about the problem of child abuse. The need to show our love is greater than ever. This hospital was underused, so our United Way worked with the Salvation Army to turn it into a place for care of abused children. We helped them see that the world does have love and kindness. In St. Louis and many other cities, the United Way helps us take care of young people. And sometimes their smiles, better than anything else, say thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Ten to nothing, our score at halftime. The Giants leading the Cardinals. The Cardinals won eight of the last nine games with New York. The Giants starting Randy Dean today, coach, and done a very creditable job in the first half. Yes, he has. He's expressed a lot of confidence and poise and uh, uh, executed the option play uh, very well several times that he's run it, thrown the ball very well. But he's impressive out here today, the two-year veteran from Northwestern University. On the other hand, the Cardinals, they were moving the ball, but it's one of those first halves where they, they just didn't get across the goal line. Well, I think, you know, they had a good drive going, and it seemed like the reverse that they tried to... Uh, uh, use on the New York Giants kind of backfired and it kind of knocked the rhythm and tempo uh, out of their drive and they haven't been uh, the same sense really. You know the game seems to be coming down to how are you going to handle the weather? In other words what will the wind and the chill factor do on the receptions of the punts? We've already seen one mishandled. It's been tough hanging on to some of the passes. Well really that the one that was mishandled was not due to the weather. It was just bad judgment on the part of Bell. He never should have tried to make that catch. It was uh, uh, luckily that uh, they got out of that without getting any points because the Giants got possession on the 38-yard line, but they didn't get any points in the drag. Hank, you look at the Giants now. They've been ahead before. In fact, I don't think they want to re be reminded how many times. They've lost five games that they've led in the second half. Are you going at halftime? You're leading 10 and nothing. What do you tell your football team? Well, I think basically you usually like to tell them that uh, it's like 0-0, zero, zero, that you have to play the second half. Uh, with the same enthusiasm and uh, do everything you possibly can to stay on the attack and get more points in the second half. The one thing that you can't do is sit on a 10-point lead and, and play very conservatively. You've got to, uh, you know, come out of the elevator, so to speak, and make something happen in the second half and do something offensively. Well, the offense all came in the first quarter of play. It all started when Joe Danello kicked a 30-yard field goal to give them that 3-0 to nothing lead. And then... On another drive of 56 yards, Randy Dean, the first touchdown pass of his career, got it to Gary Shirk, who's got two touchdown passes in as many games. And that's how it stands. In the second quarter, there was no scoring, even though both were able to move the ball pretty effectively. You can see it is a cold day, and somebody was remarking when that sun completely disappears behind the stadium here, it's going to get even colder. The field is a little frozen on the near side. The footing has been a little bit undependable and well, there's a friend of yours <laughs> Cardinals could use that right now they need a gift here in the second half trailing 10 to nothing yeah and, the, and you know the statistics uh, from the statistical viewpoint uh, Gary Ridley the Cardinals have 10 first downs and the New York Giants six total yards the Cardinals have 148 the Giants have 112 but field position really has been very important in this game so far the St. Louis Cardinals have not had good field position at all. They started on the 20, then again the 20, then the 30, then the minus 26, their own 26, their own 17. And uh, the last time they had possession, it was on their own 30. So they really haven't had much of an opportunity to explore their offensive personality because they have had bad field position in the first half. 
you're looking at Jim Hart, or were just a moment ago putting his jacket on. He was 5 of 13 in the first half for 45 yards. And Randy Dean in his first start has hit 5 of 7 passes. The re leading rusher in the first half was Coder. He has 44 yards on 10 carries. And Otis is leading the Cardinals with 39. There's the first down. The Cardinals leading. Look at that. Rushing is identical. But the passing the Cardinals leading, you looked at that, you think the Cardinals had the lead in this football game rather than New York. Well, field position plays such an important role in any game. And uh, right off the bat, why the New York Giants got possession after a fumble, recovery on the 19-yard line, and went in and got three points. Then they also had the better field position. And the next time, the, the third time they had possession, they started on their own 44 and went 56 yards and scored on a touchdown pass from Dean to Gary Shirk that was a six-yard six touchdown pass. You're looking at Randy Dean right now. He has a twin brother, Rob Dean, who played at Northwestern. He was a wide receiver. And they were saying the other day that after one of the football games, Rob Dean went out in the parking lot and everybody was asking him for his autograph, thinking it was Randy. You can't tell him apart. They are identical twins. Both of them outstanding students at Northwestern. Both of them are on the U.S. Olympic handball team. So pretty good athletes. And Randy, on his first start today, has acquitted himself very, very well in that first half of play. There's his stats. The yards are not all that impressive, but he's hit the passes, he's gained some confidence, and he's run the option. And the fact that he's that good a handball player must mean that he has good dexterity, which you have to have to be an outstanding quarterback. Now here's Jim Hart. Jim has gone over 2,500 yards passing for the year. He's over 26,000 yards in his career. Six times in his very fine 13-year career, he's passed for over 2,500 yards. And Jim, I'm sure not happy with that first half, but as you mentioned, he hasn't had the field position really to crank up and throw like he would like to. There's the crowd. They're all brave and bold here today as they hang on in this weather, which at kickoff time was one degree chill factor. And you can see the players, they are on that heated bench, which is a unique thing. You can see underneath the heat vents where the forced air comes out, keeps the old tootsies warm, and that's tough to do today. You have to be careful. You get so comfortable sitting on the bench that you want to you play. <laughs> but Bud Grant of the Vikings, he won't let them have any of that heated equipment. Boy, the Vikings having a tough day yesterday against Detroit. Well, Steve Little is going to kick off for the Cardinals. I think one of the most interesting moves of this game was that the Giants won the toss, and they elected to kick off, and the first play from scrimmage, the Cardinals fumbled the ball. Yeah, it worked out to their advantage, and uh, this time of the year and this kind of weather, it really is a good philosophy sometimes. You have a feel for that as a coach and a coaching staff, and uh, sometimes it works out very well. Steve Little has been having some leg trouble. You're looking at Ernie Pugh and Emery Moorhead. Moorhead, number 80, back for the kickoff. Steve Little, the number one draft pick of the Cardinals, had knee trouble. He had his activity curtailed by that injury, but he's kicking off here today. And this second half is underway. He hits the swiver, picked up very short at the 30, out to the 40-yard line for the Giants. Bringing that football out is going to be John Scorpan, a backup linebacker who used to play for the Buffalo Bills. John McVay hoping to break this six-game losing streak and pick up their sixth one of the year. Nine-yard return on that play. The ball at the 37-yard line. Ten to nothing if you just joined us. The Giants scoring all ten of their points in the first quarter. And there's Coach Bud Wilkinson. His club with the best record of any team in the NFC East in the second half of the season. They're five and one. In motion, Moorhead. Dean, Dakota. Harry Smith misses him. And Coder at the 40 yard line. And boy, he was hammered over there. Out to the 40. A gain of maybe two yards on the play, and that's all. Bob Pollard was over there. Pollard has played so well this year for the Cardinals. He's either been their leading tackler or their number two tackler throughout the season. And one thing about the Bob Pollard is a defensive end, the left end number 82. It's very difficult to get south outside of Bob. He's got good quickness and good leverage, and it's a lot easier to run inside of him than it is to get outside. They're going to give him about a yard, and that's all on that last play by Coder. Second and nine. More head in motion. Here comes Dornick. Dornick is hit by Eric Williams and shoved back. 
and his progress will be out to the 43 yard line. Dan Jornick seeing a lot of action in this game. That time that was another trap play with uh, Doug Van Horn, the left guard, number 63, trapping 82. Uh, but uh, Eric Williams, 55, met the play well, and as a result, they didn't succeed in making any yardage to speak of. The Giants come to a third down, and they are two of eight on third down conversion. Third down, four. You see Moorhead, number 80, to the bottom of your screen. Dornick Coder, the running back behind Randy Dean. Play action by Dean. He's going to bootleg. And he's not going to get the first down. Bob Pollard made sure of that. As he gets across the 45, possibly to the 46, but he needed to make it to the 47-yard line. Number 82, Bob Pollard. Watch Bob Pollard again. This is something he, he reads very well that time. He gets caught in the vice there a little bit, but uh, they don't see it. But Bob does a good job of containing the play and makes the tackle, and the New York Giants are forced to kick. Brad Benson going up against Pollard on that play. Jennings to kick. He has a 40-yard average. This is Gordon Bell. Now, Bell, the last time, did not have good judgment on a kick. Let's see what he does this time. He's going to let it hit. And it's going to go out of bounds just outside the 15-yard line. So the Cardinals, again, will not have the field position they would like. It's a 39-yard kick. Looking ahead now, Saturday, December 23rd, the Sun Bowl from El Paso. The Maryland Terrapins against the Texas Longhorn. Mark it down, 1.30 Eastern. Two fine offensive football teams. Texas with all that speed. Coming up right here on CBS on the 23rd. A lot of activity coming up during the holiday season. First down now. The most impressive drive St. Louis has had really is that when they run straight at the defense, especially on the early downs when they're in a 4-3 alignment. From the 17-yard line, Hart giving off to Jim Otis. Nothing doing on that play because George Martin stuffed it. This Martin's having quite a year. He had four sacks in a game against the Washington Redskins. He has become one of the fine defensive ends of the National Football League. You know, the other times they've run that play, Deardorff has done a good job on Martin. That time Martin did a good job of stuffing the play and uh, now is second down at 10. 13 17 to go in the third quarter. Here comes Will Harrell. He's got a hole. And Harrell uses it to get to the 25 yard line. The ball is loose, but it's been blown dead. There again, they ran with the tight end in the backfield. And most of the time, they line him up in the backfield with the express purpose of shifting him from right to left. And then, of course, the secondary has to make their adjustments accordingly. And this time they do a good job. Deardoff doing a good job on Martin. You see what happens on the play. And Brian Kelly overran the play. He ran behind Brian Kelly into the seam and made the eight, eight yards on the play. Third and two. Deardorff, the all-pro, showing why on that last play. Here comes Otis. And Otis fumbles the ball. It's picked up. Ernie Jones. And Jones comes up with it at the 15-yard line. Otis was trying to get an additional yard to get that first down, and the ball got away from him, and he very, very seldom fumbles the football. They're going to mark the ball at the 15, and now the Giants in excellent position with a 10 to nothing lead, and the ball at the 15. Here you see Terry Steve blocking at the point of attack along with Deardor. Number 53, Harry Carson makes the tackle. It's picked up there by number 31, Ernie Jones. Here's another shot at it. There's the ball is stripped loose by Harry Carson. Picked up there by Ernie Jer Jones in first and 10 on the plus 15 for the New York Giants. That's the second fumble recovery by Jones. Here comes Dan Dornick. He fumbles it. It's loose, and the Cardinals get it for the touchback. That was either six points or a touchback because Jimmy Robinson was over there. Had he fallen on it, it would have been a giant touchdown. Harry Smith, who had three interceptions last week, comes up and saves a touchdown. That was a trap play that time, and they have a good hole. They're the linebacker. It, it looked like number 57, Arneson, scraped it loose. By now, almost everybody's heard about the incredible Black & Decker workmate, about how it makes almost any hard job a lot easier, like planing, Hammering, sawing, 
almost anything. But what most people don't know about the incredible work make is now you can get a single Hatch model for as little as $45. Wow. That's right. A Black & Decker Workmate for about $45. That's really incredible. RCA announces a major improvement in video cassette recording. Introducing Selectivision 400. Set it today, and for the next seven days, the 400 remembers the shows you want recorded. It'll turn itself on and off up to four times, even change channels. Selectivision 400, the four-hour video cassette recorder with the seven-day memory. Let RCA turn your television into Selectivision. Thrills and excitement on the Hollywood Stunt Competition. It's the new look CBS Sports Spectacular starting January 6th. You'll say... You saw it on CBS Sports. Okay, Hank, let's go back now, see what caused this fumble. Watch the trap black, trap block that time by J.T. Turner, 68. On Arneson, but it pops through there. Perry Smith recovers. St. Louis has possession first and 10 on the 20. I was wondering who had caused the fumble. It was Tim Carney who reached in there. Here's Will Harold stepping outside. And Harrell out to the 25-yard line. So both teams fumble the football, and the Cardinals now have it at the 25-yard line. This time again, they have the tight end in the backfield. Good blocking at the point of attack by Keith Worth Wortman, Bob Young, Tom Banks, and Harrell popped through there for a six-yard gain. Makes it second and four. I don't know what all the cheering's about. It's second down now and four from the 25-yard line. Crowds up and cheering, and we don't know what it's all about yet. We'll try to find out. So Jim Otis brings the ball out to the 28-yard line. Oh, there's somebody flying. There it is. Yeah. There's what they're cheering about. No one. <laughs> Great I, being a coach, isn't I it? Couldn't, I couldn't imagine what that was. I didn't know where it was coming from. Third and two. <laughs> boy, boy, if you're in a fishbowl, you've got to be subject to everything. Third down and two. Here comes Otis trying to pick up the first down. It's going to be very close. Boy, Henry, Harry Carson, number 53, really got a good shot on Jim Otis on that last play. Let's see if he got the first down. It's going to be very, very close. Boy, that Carson roams all over the place. He's out of South Carolina State. He was their fourth round draft pick in 76, and they got the first down. So the Cardinals with the first down on top of the 30. This is the way they looked the last early in the game where they marched the ball down the field. Boy, the crowd is going bananas here. Here's Harrell again. And Harrell a fumble. Looks like he may have. You can't see it from here, but the ball apparently recovered by St. Louis. Troy Archer was the guy that was in on the tackle. And the ball will be marked at the 33. Again, a three. It'll be second down and seven. Both teams having a tough time hanging on to the ball. Harrell now 73 yards on 12 carries. Otis with 45 yards rushing. Let's see if they run again with a tight end in the backfield and a quick count. They've done that very enough. Nope, it goes in motion this time. The crowd chanting now as Hart back to throw. Al Chandler, Chandler wide open. He's to the 25. Chandler to the 20-yard line. He fumbles it, but it's been blown dead. Al Chandler with the catch up the middle. Beautiful fake that time by Hart, and he had Chandler wide open. You know what happens? They like to fake to the fullback and then throw back to the weak side on that particular kind of a play. Here you see it again. But instead, he looked to his left. And then right, went right down the middle to the tight end, Al Chandler, who going into this game only caught eight passes. That's his ninth reception for the year. And that was a 47-yard gain by Chandler. There it is. You see the fake to Otis. And he's popped wide open right down the middle. Van Pelt evidently was involved in coverage on the tight end. They were double covering the outside people. At the 20-yard line of first down for St. Louis. Jim Otis. Otis up the middle. And Otis, wait a minute. Whistle blowing the play dead. They have a flag. So that play will not count. 
the legal procedure against St. Louis. You know, one thing is very important offensively, Gary, is that you change the rhythm, change the tempo, change the count, so if uh, the, the, so the defense can't get geared to what you're doing, and sometimes if you're not careful, you go on the same count so much, let's listen to the call. Now the microphone's still not working, but it's the illegal procedure. Steve but Jones comes in now for the Cardinals. But if you're not careful, a quarterback has a tendency a lot of time to go on two consistently, and as a result, the defense gets a jump on the ball before the offense, and that's when you're in trouble. But uh, I think St. Louis is did a, doing a good job of changing the count. They're going on quick counts a lot in this game and on this drive. Well, the crowd chanting here, it's a little hard to discern what they're saying, but <laughs> this crowd is not very happy, even though their team is leading 10 to nothing. So the penalty makes it first down, 15 yards to go just outside the 25-yard line. We have 8.55 to go in the third quarter. All right, on a little delay to Will Harrell, and Harrell gets just about five of those yards back. A little Hutchinson and Chubbin going there. Terry Steve, number 68, not too happy. Boy, what a solid performer he has been since being acquired from the New Orleans Saints. You know, they talk a lot about that trade being a, a one-sided trade, but I guarantee you that Terry Steve is going to be a fine performer for the St. Louis Cardinals. If he stays healthy, he's going to be a 10-year man, and he's going to be a great football player for St. Louis. They're going to be very happy with him. He's a 100% player with a lot of ability. All right, second down. You saw it, 12 yards to go. Dave Steep in motion, hard back, got protection, beautiful protection. Jones! Dave Jones can't hang on. Again, you've got to give plaudits to that offensive line. They had sealed everything off. Yeah, but that time it was just a, a quick screen pass that time, and it opened up nicely to Steve Jones. He just took his eye off the ball. They evidently started to run before he made the reception and it fell incomplete, but it looked like that play started to develop in pretty good shape and might have been a big game. The Cardinals come to a third down situation. They're four of ten in that department. Jones is coming off his best game as the Cardinals. Last week, he picked up 78 yards rushing. On a third and 12. He's hit as he releases the ball. Pressure put on by John Mendenhall. That's Mendenhall. about the third time he's had a pass deflected up front. Yeah, Mendenhall really uh, did a good job of coming off the line of scrimmage and uh, getting to the quarterback, number 64. Let's see if he gets into this picture here. Here he gets the penetration right here, comes around the outside, gets him on the shoulder, and forces Jim Hart to throw a knuckleball into the turf. Incomplete. 39-yard field goal attempt by Jim Bakken, who missed a 44-yarder back in the first quarter. Bakken now 11 of 21 in the field goal department. This one looks like it's waving right, and it's no good. It veered to the right, and Bakken 0 for 2. This is the 39-yard attempt. The Giants maintain their 10 to nothing lead. Eight minutes left in the third quarter. The Stevens Estate. The $20,000 Mercedes looks right at home. So does the $5,000 Granada Ghia, sometimes mistaken for a Mercedes. It's an American classic. Meredith Manor. Mercedes styling looks at home. And Granada's does, too. Hamilton House. Mercedes classic styling. Granada's classic styling. And the Granada price makes it right at home at any home. The 79 Ford Granada at your Ford dealer. I'm the Skill Sand Cat, a different breed of compact sander, a tiger for work, a pussy cat to handle. I eat old oak for breakfast. With a quick belt change, I rush through rust. I go where you need me because I'm light and manageable. I'm the Sand Cat, the tool it took skill to build. $49.99 at participating dealers. If you do it yourself and do it with pride, then do it with skill. The Giants have the football, and they still have a 10 to nothing lead after a 39-yard field goal by Jim Bakken missed the mark. They have the ball at their own 22-yard line. Eight minutes to go, third quarter. Randy Dean first down. He's going for everything. Moorhead down here. Broken up by Carl Allen. 
The ball hung up just a little bit, and Allen had a chance at it. Yeah, he waited a little bit too long to release the ball, but uh, Moorhead, Moorhead was open, and they, they worked on Carl Allen, number 27. He had him licked, but by the time the ball got there, Allen really did a good job of recovering on the play and knocking it down to second and 10, New York. Allen this year with four interceptions. Dean has thrown uh, completed five of eight for minus nine yards. Nine yards. From the 22 now, second down and 10. Dean again to throw. Back setting up the screen, complete to Coder. And Coder is going to be rammed out of bounds at the 25-yard line, so they'll still be seven yards short of the first down. Mark Arneson stuffed that play pretty well. There is a flag on the play. Here it is, a screen pass to Coder. He goes back in the pocket. One thing that you have to do, you have to do a good job of acting. Lyman and backs all alike to make it look just like a pass. I try to get a number. There you see him running to the outside. Mark Arneson, number 57, is involved in making a play. Arneson really played that blocker off well, trying to see where Coder had cut, then made the play. Roger Worley has the play described to him by Jim Cunning, and they're going to step it up. Let's see what it's all about. And here we find out. Holding number 63, still second down. 63 is Doug Van Horn, who killed Eve Holding. So the 10 yard penalty makes it second down now. 19 yards to go. The ball at the 13 yard line. That's Jimmy Robinson in motion, and Mike Dawson fires off. Mike Dawson, let's see if he was drawn up or was he offside. I believe he was offside, and he was. Mike Dawson, third-year man out of Arizona, who has seven sacks this year. Dawson really come on for this football team. Started the year, he was not the guy that opened up. They had Charlie Davis. He went down to the knee, and now Dawson's been there all year long. There you see Dawson uh, playing leapfrog there. <laughs> Not the count. Second down now, 14 yards to go. So they get five of those yards back on the penalty. Randy Dean, far side, Robinson. Robinson able to get across the 20 to the 23-yard line, and that's all. So Robinson covered very well by Perry Smith. Five-yard pickup on the play. Barry Smith again playing the cornerback spot as Roger Worley has been forced to move to safety due to the injury to Ken Stone. Look at that one. The Jets coming back a little bit. Cleveland led early in that game 14 to nothing. Third down. Nine yards to go from the 23 and a half yard line. Coming in now, Ernie Pugh for the Giants, number 82. He'll join Robinson split out at the bottom of the screen. Here's Dean on a little quarterback delay, and Dean's got the first down. Randy Dean on a quarterback draw. 12 yard pickup on the play. Yeah, it's a nice looking play. They have a double slot, double slot formation with uh, everybody out except the fullback. He goes back into the pocket like he's gonna throw, then runs a draw play inside. The, the right side of the giant offensive line do a, they do a good job. J.D. Turner, Brad Benson, and uh, Randy Dean does the rest with a nice run. First and 10, ball's on the 35. So they come back after that penalty that made it first and 19 and battle back for the first down. Here comes the option to Coder. Mark Arneson's there, Ken Green is there. And the forward progress, about a two yard pickup to the 37 yard line. St. Louis has done a good job of making adjustments to stop the option play. They didn't handle it very well early in the game when they first saw it. But it's obvious they know what to do with it now and they haven't permitted the, the Giants to get much yardage the last two times they ran the option play uh, from the I formation. Randy Dean in this game has carried the ball five times for 34 yards. Last week he had 63 yards rushing. He led the team in that loss to Los Angeles. Second down, eight yards to go. Dean to Coder, flags on the play. Coder has a first down, and he's all the way across the 50 to the 47 of St. Louis before Ken Green wrestled him down, but there's a flag on the play. 
17-yard run, but I believe it's going to come back. J.T. Turner, number 68, the right guard, really threw a beautiful trap block on John Zook, number 63. And when we talk about a trap block, well, we're going to have offsetting penalty. Watch the trap block here coming up, number 68. There you see him trapping Zook. Makes a beautiful block with the right shoulder, knocks him down into the turf. A nice gain on the play, but it's nullified because of offsetting penalties. Say that J.T. Turner and Brad Benson on the right side of that offensive line for the Giants, they have been a surprise. Turner was a defensive player a year ago. Benson they picked up as a free agent from New England. And they look like they're going to play a lot of football in the years ahead for New York. So, offsetting penalties, we do it over. Second down and eight. Dean off to Dornick. Dornick spins his way for the first down, and he's going to make it to the 46 of St. Louis. Roger Worley made the stop. First down, New York. They came right back with another trap. That's exactly what that was again. Dornick on a trap play again with J.T. Turner. Watch the right guard. Here he is trapping on the play. The linebacker was blitzing. Steve Neals, he trapped the linebacker. Dornick did a good job of spinning, keeping his balance, and is finally tackled there by Roger Worley after he makes a great run and a nice game. First and 10, the ball's on a 45 for the St. Louis Cardinals. 18-yard pickup, just short of the 45-yard line. Here comes Coder. Coder gets a block, and Coder has another first down. And New York is on the move. Again, it was Worley that made the stop. Two men getting up slowly. Eric Williams is getting up very slowly for St. Louis, and also Tim Cardy. They collided on the near sideline. It's just a sweep from the I formation. Coder is doing a good job out front. Uh, number 71, Gordon Gravel, does a good job with his responsibility, but he pops through there. Roger Worley finally makes the tackle after he made 12 yards on the play. So John McVay's team with the lead and trying to put some icing on the cake now. 10 to nothing lead, and they're on the move. First down at the 32 of St. Louis. 4 6 remaining in the third quarter. Here comes Coder. And no place to go this time because Tim Carney who was shaken up on that previous play, got in there in a hurry. He's a leading tackler for the Cardinals. That time it was another trap, an option play, an option trap, whereby J.T. Turner, number 68, pulled with the express purpose of blocking and trapping John Zook. And we talk about a trap. Uh, we talk about uh, a play where you permit the defensive player to come across the line of scrimmage and feel like nobody's going to block him, and then somebody blocks him from the inside out. That's what we referred to uh, as a trap play. And that makes you think the next time. Yes, it makes you a little cautious. Second down and 12. A lot of room on the right side on Carl Allen. There's Randy Dean. Pressure put on, intercepted, picked off. Steve Niels has the football. And Niels is tripped up at the 45-yard line. And that is the first interception of the year for number 53 who has three fumble recoveries and four sacks this year for the Cardinals. Here's Randy Dean going back into the pocket. And uh, I don't know what happened on the play, why he would throw it to Steve Niels, but he did. And the Cardinals have the football. When you shoot a lot of pool and bars, you want to stay fast and loose. And you don't want to get filled up. That's why I drink light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than their regular beer and it's less filling. Plus, the taste is great. And even though a lot of people don't think pool is strenuous, let me tell you something. You can work up a real good thirst, even when you're just showing off. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Come fly with me, fly, fly away. Come fly with me in one magnificent flying machine. The 79 Thunderbirds. I love its luxurious cockpit. Fly with a V8 engine. Power steering and power brakes, all standards. Glide in great style with wrap over roof and opera windows at a down to earth sticker price. 79 Thunderbirds. What a way to fly at your four dealers. Watch the World Powerlifting Championships coming in 79 on the New Look CBS Sports Spectacular. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports.
With Hank Stram, I'm Gary Bender at the 46-yard line. The Cardinals have the ball after the interception by Steve Neal. 3.14 to go, third quarter. Hart first down pass intended for Steve, and he was hit. Ernie Jones really put a hit on him. He really gave him a shot that time. It was the same play that they've run on two other occasions, three other occasions, I should say. Uh, that time they faked to the fullback, went up the middle, and try to hit him on a quick post. Watch what happens with Ernie Jones. Watch the hit. He really hits, hits him with the left shoulder with a shoulder pad, gets good leverage, and uh, made him cough up the football on the play. Hart 6 to 17 for 92 yards. Ernie Jones, starter with the Seattle Seahawks in 1976. He's been a fine acquisition for the Giants. Back and down 10. Here comes Jim Otis. Otis gets five yards. And he crosses in to the New York Giant end of the field. John Mendenhall making the stop. You know, going back to Dave Steve, he's been quite a fine for them. But first, let's talk about the Peach Bowl in Atlanta. Purdue, the Boilermakers, an old school of yours, Hank. Yeah, this is uh, happy to see them go to, go to a bowl game after all these years. The last time they represented uh, the Big Ten in the bowl game was in 1967 in the Rose Bowl. At Georgia Tech, Pepper Rogers crew, 7 to 4, 1 o'clock Eastern. That's Christmas Day right here on CBS. We'll pick up that Dave Steve story in a moment as we now have a third down and five just inside the 50-yard line. Hart. And Will Harrell trying to come up with a catch. Cannot Brian Kelly defending on the play. It's hard to say about Steve. He's the guy that's replacing Mel Gray. He's played so well. A seventh-round draft pick. They want him to put on more weight. They can't get any weight on him as he's 6'3 and only weighs 186 and boy and you take poundings like he did on that one pass you need a little more beef on you well you send him to the filler station get him pumped up I guess <laughs> <laughs> Mike Wood the kick he's averaged on three kicks 26 yards two men back deep now Jimmy Robinson goes back there for the Giants here's Wood kicking a low kick and on the fly, here comes Jimmy Robinson, and Kurt Allerman is there. Kurt Allerman coming up, a very dangerous situation for the Cardinals, but Townsend and Allerman recovered it very well after only a 21-yard kick. A four-yard return by Robinson, the Giants with the football, and with a 10 to nothing lead. A good quarterback does his homework on and off the field. That's probably why the three of us are all drinking light beer from Miller. Hey, Light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. Plus, it tastes great. And you know it's important to have a command of facts like that. It's mental discipline, really. You're darn right. Because if you know every position, every option, every formation, you'll never get your signals crossed. Hey, that's my beer, Terry. Oh, no, this yeah, is no, no, wait, well, wait, 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 Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. I feel my label. Kids love to play fireman. This Christmas, add to their fun with Radio Shack's Fire Chief Helmet and Fire Engine. This authentic-looking helmet has a flashing red light and siren. Fire Engine has extendable ladder, flashing beacon, and comes with controlled cams for six different driving patterns. Two action-packed gifts from Radio Shack. Price forgiven. Fire Chief Helmet, just $6.99. Fire Engine, only $5.99. Only at Radio Shack. A Tandy Company. Well, the chill factor here prior to kickoff was one degree, and there's some guy. Well, he just doesn't feel any pain, I guess. You see him behind there? He doesn't have his shirt on. <laughs> oh, there they are. All right. Here's Doug Coder as we have a first down for the Giants after the 21-yard punt by Mike Wood. Tim Carney making the stop. Four-yard pickup, and the ball is just across the 35-yard line. I mentioned this earlier, but I think it's a lot easier to run inside of Bob Pollard than it is to try to get outside. That time they did run inside and uh, picked up five yards on the play. Well, we've got St. Nick here. We've got a gorilla or two and a guy without his shirt. We've got everyone here today. It's like the gong show. <laughs> Down and five. They may gong them out. <laughs> Here's more head in motion. Up the middle, Dornick. And he runs into some opposition on that play. That time it was another trap play without a trap. Turner didn't get a chance to do any trapping on the play, and the, as a result, they didn't succeed in uh, making much yardage. Third and three. So the Cardinals trailing 10 to nothing with a minute 24 left in the third quarter. Look at Dallas. Dallas is going to, with that win, clinch the home field advantage through the out the playoffs in Philadelphia. What a damaging loss that will be to them. 
if it remains that way as they're in the third quarter. Third down, three yards to go from the 38. Randy Dean off to Coder, and Coder's got the first down. Doug Coder having a good day. Boy, that was another trap. That time they trapped Mark Arneson on the play. A beautiful job done by J.T. Turner, number 68. that provided the ball carrier, Coder, to make the necessary yardage in a big play. Here you see it. There you see the trap. You see the gapping hole. And uh, the tackle, finally by Tim Kearney, number 56. Ten-yard pickup, Coder 75 yards. That's Perry Smith coming off. Cardinals are very thin in that secondary as it is with Stone out now on the injury list. They picked up Raleigh Wolsey this week, a former Dallas Cowboy Cleveland Brown. Lee Nelson is now checked in replacing Perry Smith. Pitch back to Willie Spencer, and the big guy doesn't go very far. He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Dawson over to make the tackle. Second down, virtually 10 yards to go. They didn't do much of a job of blocking on the left side that time, and uh, they had a lot of running room the way they lined up their defense, but uh, the execution of the play was poor, and as a result, they didn't make any yardage on the play. We're coming to the close of this third quarter. The Giants hanging on to the lead that they built in the first quarter when they scored all 10 of their points. Robinson flanked out. Carl Allen, number 27, the left corner, is giving the receiver a lot of room. There it is. More head in front of Carl Allen. And, Coach, you saw that one coming all the way. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. What's the score? The New York Giants 10. The St. Louis Cardinals nothing. We now pause for a word from your local station. Monday, a beautiful woman offers the white shadow a top job as a...